Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Essential Physiotherapy. Today we are going to discuss about the shoulder joint, mainly the glenohumeral joint. The shoulder joint is a polyaxial synovial joint, belongs to the ball and socket variety. Articularance. The shoulder joint is formed by the articulation of the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa of the scapula with the head of the humerus. The proximal part of the joint is the glenoid cavity and the distal part is the head of the humerus. The concavity of the glenoid fossa is increased by a fibrocartilaginous ribbon-like structure called the glenoid labrum. The head of the humerus is hemispherical in shape and is also covered with the hyaline articular cartilage. Ligaments. First one is the capsule. The capsule is a loose fibrous sac-like structure, covers the joint and the inner surface of the capsule is lined by the synovial membrane. The capsule is proximally attached to the margins of the glenoid fossa and distally it is attached to the anatomical neck of the humerus. Glenohumeral ligament. There are three glenohumeral ligaments, superior, middle and inferior. Proximally, the glenohumeral ligament is attached to the upper end of the anterior border of the glenoid fossa. Distally, the superior glenohumeral ligament is attached to the top of the left subtuberosity. The middle glenohumeral ligament is attached to the lower part of the lesser tuberosity and the inferior glenohumeral ligament to the shaft of the humerus just below the lesser tuberosity. Transverse humeral ligament. The transverse humeral ligament is proximally attached to the top of the greater tuberosity and distally attached to the top of the lesser tuberosity. The coracohumeral ligament. The coracohumeral ligament is proximally attached to the lateral margin of the root of the coracoid process and distally to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The coracoacromial ligament. It is a triangular band and its subex is attached to the acromion process and the base is attached to the lateral margin of the coracoid process. Next, it's important to see the relations of the shoulder joint. In this, we will discuss about the muscles, bursae, vessels and the nerves. I will upload the detailed diagrammatic explanation of the relation of shoulder joint in my next video. Now, what you have in your screen is the muscles attached to the shoulder joint. In the anterior aspect of the shoulder joint, there are two muscles are seen, namely the anterior fibers of the deltoid and the subscapularis. In the posterior aspect, we have three muscles which are the posterior fibers of the deltoid, infraspinatus and the teres minor. In the lateral aspect, we can only see the lateral fibers of the deltoid. Superiorly, the long head of biceps, deltoid and the supraspinatus. Next, we are going to discuss about the bursae around the shoulder joint. A bursae is a fluid filled stack like structure which presents in the joints and it helps to reduce the friction. There are six bursae in the shoulder joint. The subscapular bursae, infraspinatus bursae, subacromial bursae, Subcoracoid bursae, a bursae above the coracoid process, one on the upper surface of the acromion respectively. Blood supply to the shoulder joint. It is easy to remember the name of the arteries by a keyword pass. P stands for posterior circumflex humeral artery, A stands for anterior circumflex humeral artery, S stands for subscapular and the suprascapular arteries. Nerve supply to the shoulder joint. There are three nerves supplying to the shoulder joint, namely the lateral pectoral nerve, suprascapular nerve, and the axillary nerve. Next, we will discuss about the movements possible in the joint and the muscles responsible for these movements. This is the stick diagram of the shoulder flexion, and the muscles responsible for this movement is the anterior fibers of the deltoid and the pectoralis major. The extension of the shoulder is done by the posterior fibers of the deltoid, teres major and the latissimus dorsi. The first 15 to 30 degree of abduction is done by the supraspinatus, 30 to 90 degrees by the lateral fibers of the deltoid and the remaining 90 to 180 degree is done by the trapezius and the serratus anterior. The adduction of the joint is done by the five muscles, namely the latissimus dorsi, pectoralis major, teres major, coracobrachialis and the long head of the triceps. The medial rotation of the joint is done by the subscapularis muscle and the teres major. 
The lateral rotation of the joint is done by the infraspinatus and the teres minor. And finally, the 360 degree circumduction in the sagittal plane. In this, I made the tabular column of the shoulder joint movements and the corresponding muscles. Applied anatomy of the shoulder joint. The dislocation. The shoulder dislocation is more common than any other joints in the body due to laxity of the capsule. Dislocation usually occurs when the arm is abducted and it may damage the axillary nerve. The second one is the supraspinatus tendonitis. It may cause severe pain in the joint between the 60 to 120 degree of the shoulder abduction. In this range, the tendon impinges against the opening acromion. In the frozen shoulder, two layers of the synovial membrane adhere to each other causing severe pain in shoulder stiffness in the joint and restriction in the movements. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos.